Okay, so uh, welcome back, and um, this is the third video uh, talking about L-Feed. Uh, the first video talked about L-Feed as an RSS, as a feed reader, which I've been playing with a little bit. Uh, the last video talked about how we could make a hydro, which we have over here, uh, which was a nice way to jump around. So if I'm within my L-Feed reader, I can jump to unread, uh, sorry. I can jump to Emacs stuff. Let's say I can't jump to unread stuff because I don't have it here in my Hydra. So the problem with this is um, I've still got to come into here and change my configuration every time I've got a, um, you know, every time I change my tags. And that's a problem. That's not really that nice. Um, so there had to be a better solution. So I was thinking maybe there's a way that I can automatically pull out my tags and build this Hydra. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'm going to also comment this line back in because we're going to type in some code. But first, let's go to another buffer. And um, let me show a couple of things. One thing that I found is there's a command lfeed. Um, actually, let me write this in case I want to save it. Uh, testing.el. Uh, L feed, what is it? Um, DB get all tags. And that's not defined. Um, there it is. Why is it not finding that? Um, hmm. Oh, get, not get feed. Uh, get all tags. Probably because I'm not running L feed right now. Run L feed. Let's go back here. And there we go. And down here, uh, no, it's not known. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's go to messages. Um, and you see here, every time I ran that, it put into the message buffer, my tags are active blog, CS, education, Emacs, local, et cetera, et cetera. So those are all my tags in my database. So if there were a way to kind of pull those out and put them into my Hydra, um, I'd be in business. So how do we do that? that that's kind of tricky. Well, it turns out that, um, you know, because you basically have to build a chunk of code which we will then execute. And the really cool thing is um, Emacs, Elisp, it's a Lisp and so it has macros. Now I'm not talking about keyboard macros like we did way back when. I'm talking about um, Lisp style macros. And the way it works, the way a macro works, and this is not going to be um, a talk about macros, it's just to give you an idea of what you can do, is let's like look, make a macro called infix. And it'll take an A, op, and a C. And you know from Elisp, well, from my, I showed this very early on, is, you know, plus two, three, you'll see on the bottom is five. You know, like it just, you know, that's how we do it. We can define this macro to say, to basically transform the code. And so then if we say, let's do a macro expand of infix, I could spell, 30 times 10, let's say, and let's go to our messages buffer, um, we'll see that 30 times 10 has been transformed into 30 times 30, 10. And if we actually run this, if we run the macro infix on 30 times 10, and if you look down in the bottom here, in fox, in fix, it's 300. Or 20 divided by 4, it's 5, if you saw it five down there. Um, so the cool thing here is um, macros can transform the code. And so what I did is I put a bunch of things together. So I'll, I'll, I'm just going to copy over the code. Um, so let's go to myinit.org and um, let's start putting this stuff over here. So what I had to do is um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to write, I'll just copy all of it and then we'll just go through it.
Whoops, so let's, let's do this. Uh, so what I wanted to do is the way the way the um, this is the core of that macro uh, of not the macro of um, the hydra. This is the macro. Um, is you need lines that have character and then the command, which will be L feed search set filter, and then some string for the filter. So what I had to do is I had to go through all of those tags and um, basically take each tag. So let's go back to that message buffer. Um, so each of the tags, where do we have the tags somewhere in here? Um, active, so it'll go through each one and take active. It'll pull out the A for active, and then it'll also use the string active to make the filter and the instruction. And in the case of education, since there's an uppercase letter, it'll pull out the D and make that the special letter. So let's see how we did this. Again, I'm not going to go into this in huge details, um, but uh, this could hopefully encourage some of you to start looking at programming an ELISP and, and doing things on your own. Maybe I'll make a series on ELISP. I'm not really an expert. This is, you know, I, knew, I know enough to be dangerous. You know, I know enough to screw myself over to make, make, make mistakes, and so that's how I figured this one out. Um, so basically, this is going to make a bunch of lines each one in this form. So we're going to use map car, it's a mapping function. This is gonna go over each of my, let me actually move something over here. Um, what this is going to do is it's gonna go over active blogs, see each of those, and for each of them, it's gonna get the tabs tag string, so that's gonna turn this active into the string active, blog into the string blog, CS into the string CS. Then it's going to call my own function that I wrote here, get, a, a get hydra option key tag string, which will either give me the first uppercase letter in the string, or if there's no uppercase letters, the first letter. Um, so I have to pay attention to my input. And then it's going to make a list together, and the list is going to be of the form. It's going to be that first character, so that's this guy here. Then it's going to put on um, L feed search set filter six months ago plus the tag. So that's going to be like something like this. Um, and then it's going to put the tag string, which is going to be the little description. And so the uh, Hydra get option, that's this guy here, it's going to basically say, let's see if it has a capital letter in it. It has a capital letter in it if it matches a string with an uppercase, you know, if there's an uppercase letter in the string. Um, so if there is a location for an uppercase letter, then we're going to take that uppercase letter and then we'll downcase it and make it a lowercase letter. And otherwise, it's just going to be the first character of the string. And then finally, we have our macro. And the way the macro works is everything is going to be verbatim. So it's just going to be def hydra. When, it, when we run mz make l feed hydra, it's just going to do def hydra, except this line, instead of being this line here, it's going to replace it with the output of this line, which are all of those little elements, each of the letters. And so then I'm using this function make and run the hydra. I'm going to make the hydra again and then call the body. I'm, the reason I make the hydra each time is this way, if I add a new tag, it'll, it'll just work. So let's run everything. Um, that hopefully was good. So let's go into here and let's now make our hydra. And notice that it's a whole lot bigger now. So I've got active blog CS education, but there's the D for that. So I can look for education. I can look for local stuff, mostly Gothamist. Miscellaneous, that's just 538. Uh, sports, um, you know, tech, you know, et cetera. And that's it. I'm not quite sure why I get these, you know, these different highlighting here. I'll have to look into this. Um, look at the unread stuff. Um, you know, and that's really cool. Um, I can look at everything. Uh, but let's say I add another tag. Let's add, um, I think plus adds another tag. Uh, let's call this test tag. Let's see if this works. I don't know if this works per se. But let's go back to L feed. And now let's jump. And I've got test tag. Of course, I can't use it because I used the letter that was already there. Uh, so let's come up to here and let's remove, whoops, uh, let it, that's minus, remove test tag. And let's do it again. Let us add 
test tag with a capital G. And now if I type jump, it's test tag and we get the capital G and it's just gonna give us that one. Let's remove test tag with the capital G and we are done. Um, so let me just see if I set the database up now. Let me jump to all my unread stuff. It looks good. It looks like everything is set up right. Um, so that's L feed. That's hydros, and that's using a macro to make a hydra on the fly, which I think is the perfect solution for me for this. I'm still playing with it a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if um, if I like it this way. I've got to learn a little bit more about um, you know how to configure it. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's a little little bit of a touch of some some Elisp stuff, some Elisp for macros, a little Elisp programming. Um, and that's how I'm playing with L, um, with Elfeed right now. So I hope you enjoyed these. I will uh, put these, uh, uh, well, at this point, all of them are going to be up if you see this. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, enjoy. If you're using a feeder, check out Elfeed with these different features to it. And that's, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.